how can you get funding when you want to scale and grow your business and you are a businesswoman, business owner? That's what this video will be all about. My name is Tineke Rense from Powerful Business Women and I help self-employed business women to build a business and become a business owner, at least double their income in a year. But what about funding? Funding is one of the ways to make scaling possible. So for example, you need money because you might want to automate or because you might uh, need a big marketing campaign or because you might need to employ people or you might want to buy a business. There can be various, various reasons why you would want funding. Um, and how do you know that you need funding? Well, the situations I've just explained, they will occur. It's not about when you don't have enough money to pay the bills. That's a cash flow issue. And then there is either you're not sending out enough invoices, so you don't have enough clients, or they don't pay you soon enough, fast enough, well enough. It can also be a problem of fees that you don't ask enough. That's not what this is about. If you cannot pay your bills, Funding is not always the necessary thought. I would first go and work on your cash flow. Investors or banks will not, will, will, well, they, they may fund for cash flow, but you would have to have a lot in the pocket in store in the future and can prove that. You would have to have recurring contracts, you would have to have a lot of uh, a good forecasts. You would have to have a lot of experience. You would have to show your past results and all, all of that. You you might have a seasoned business where you know you, are, you, you only can make uh, the money in five months, but you need it for the rest of the year. There's, but usually it's not because you cannot pay the bills. It's because you have big ideas and not enough money to, to create that. And now I know many women, they then start funding their own business and they gradually build their business and make it grow slowly, slowly, slowly. It's a nice way, it's a way that women prefer because then it's not so far out of their comfort zone. They don't like to be in debt. It's not always the smartest way. It's definitely not the way that many men choose. They choose to make big leaps, and big leaps also means big risks. And that is something women find very difficult to handle emotionally. Um, so how does it work? How do you get funding? You need more clients. That's, that's always the first thing to look at. Now. Are you capable of finding these clients yourself or do you need money for marketing? You can go to a bank, but I can tell you since the financial crisis started in 2008, banks have withdrawn their responsibility to funding business people and something that they're not communicating, but they usually don't like funding anymore when it's beneath one million. Because their, their costs of analyzing and paperwork and contracts and all, all, all and time is so time consuming and it costs them so much money that they're not going to make money if they do lo um, loans lower or credits which, which are lower. Um, you can do crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is, is n not, not so much control you have. You're not talking to a person. You create your prospect, you create your video, you choose the platform, and, then, and, and, and you can promote it in your social media and in your email, but that's all you can do. There's nobody you, you, you it's, it's online convincing. And if you're good at that, perfect. 
Um, you can go to an investor. That's one on one. You pitch to them. You have your pitch deck. You have your um, your advertising story. You have your mission, your vision. You have your team. You have your benchmark results and research. All those things. You have your forecasts. And then they might like the story, but it's even more important, do they like you? And here is something strange. They often, the men, because often it's men who invest, don't like you or can't see the idea because it's not tangible enough. Uh, I mean, they would like you as a person, of course, but they don't like your flair, your guts, your mission, your vision, your action, uh, action taking or your experience. Because see, women will only ask for money if they know they can pay it back. So it's, it's safe. And the man, the investor on the other side, men like challenges. They, they don't like to play safe. They like to compete emotionally. All of this is emotionally. On, on a business level and, and a conscious level, they want to have a safe investment. And that's what they're looking at. But secretly, that's not what drives them. So here are you with your uh, safe uh, pitch. Um, the most likely outcome, which is not huge, no big vision, no risks. You might be talking a bit hesitant because you, you haven't learned how to pitch and how to present yourself. And, th and then they will just say no because of that, no matter how good your idea is. And it's actually been proven that when you invest one dollar in a in a woman in a woman's own business, it's a near guarantee double investment return on investment. So you will get two dollars. You'll get your investment and you'll double it. Still, it's this subconscious story and bias of men and women why this is more difficult for women to uh, talk to investors. And when you are talking to an investor, and I'm now on that side, uh, I'm, I'm on the side of helping women to fund. I spoke to a lady and she, she, she's an extremely businesswoman, but she had never made a, a, a financial plan and financial forecast. I said, well, you, you can't talk to us if you don't, so you, you'll have to go and do that. Go and talk to your bookkeeper, Google on YouTube how to create a financial plan. You will never, ever, ever get money if you don't do that. You need a business plan. And she said, yeah, but that's so much work and so much time. I said, yes. <laughs> but how do you, do, you, do you think we're going to invest in you be, just because of what you, you, you tell us? No, you need to show us on paper. We need to be able to read it as well, keep you accountable on it. We want a marketing plan. And she said, well, we do Google ads. And I said, well, if that's your marketing, I want a forecast. I want where is this going to go? What are your parameters? How much money is going in? How much how much be, uh, website visits do you have? How, uh, how much return on investment do you have? So how much advertising bud budget do you need to spend before you have one paying client? Because then we know Okay, if that's 100 for every one paying client, if you pay 200 advertising budget, you have two clients, right? Communication plan. So all these things are important when you, and, and they are equally as important when you go and talk to a bank. Don't, eh, don't, don't be mistaken, but usually women uh, on average need less funding than men. On average, yeah, I know in the tech industry it's totally different because they need money for building platforms and 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 IT, and that's very and hugely expensive. So, what are some of the problems that women encounter when they are going to find funding? Women don't like to have debt. It's a it's a liability. It's a risk. It keeps it, it keeps their mind occupied. They might not be able to sleep around it. 
So um, it is something women need to train and work on. Because otherwise, you'll make it, you, you make it very difficult on yourself. There's another thing, and that's not specifically for women, it's for all business uh, owners in general. They don't like other people to decide what to do. If you, have, if you go to a bank and you get a loan, the bank is not deciding. But if you get an investor and they get shares, and sometimes they demand more than 50%, because they want to stay in control of their investment, then you basically have no more say in your business. And I can understand that they don't want that, business people. It's a creepy idea. Your idea, your business, something you've been working on, and somebody else gets the say. But if that's someone who is capable of making lots of money and therefore that's what you should look at ladies can create a lot of impact because they can reach out to many people what's more important to you that you have control over your business or that it's going to be big with the aid of someone who's experienced and you reach out and help and support many people there's also another problem that women encounter, and that's often they are not in the right networks. Now, nowadays in the uh, startup scene, there's a lot of incubators, and investors are well connected with incubators. Incubators are platforms, buildings, where there are facilities for startups to hang out together, to uh, to get coaching, to get training, to get uh, go get to go to events get help with pitching and creating pitch decks and everything and they will also be introduced to investors but if you're not in the startup scene and you're not involved with an incubator um, you will have to go in and search in your own network and often women don't have the right connections to on general usually the, the white male with a lot of money and then there's another thing, many women lack the masculine attitude. You don't have to be a man to be masculine. Masculinity certainly helps scaling and growing your business. Certainly helps when you want to find funding for your business. But if you're like talking like this instead of that, that already makes a huge difference. And you can train because it's just a posture, but if it's still here in your mind, it will show in the energy of your words and people sense it. They might not know, but they will say, it's my gut feeling. And that is exactly what it is. And people who have learned to trust and investors have learned to trust their gut feeling, they will act upon it. They don't need a reason to say no. They just say it doesn't feel right. So what's my involvement in this? I'm the chair of She Credits. It's a Dutch national organization where we help our members, which are 50% female owned businesses to find funding amongst our other members. So you can become a member if you want to finance and you can become a member if you are looking for funding. And we bring those, together, those two together. We have a due diligence uh, commission who, who does exactly the same what a bank would do or, or an investor would do before they make a decision on starting to uh, give funding. We provide coaching for the, for the woman. Uh, so it's a pretty safe investment. It's we're all supporting each other and she credit is managing this and facilitating that process. My name is Tine Grenze. I'm from Powerful Business Academy and I help business women to build a business from solopreneur to business owner. And if you feel that you might want to talk to me about something, just schedule a quick 15 minute call. It's free. 
The link is down in the comments or in the post or in the YouTube description. And who knows, we, we might be able to talk soon. For now, bye bye. Next week there will be another exotic video because I will still be on my holiday location in Turkey. Um, so see you next week. Bye bye.